It is June the 9th, 2016, and I'm out here in the shop, and I was uh, tinkering earlier in the day and found out some uh, very interesting things that I think you guys will enjoy. Uh, this is an amplifier that I've showed uh, quite a number of times on my YouTube videos that I built back in 1977. It's a single channel of a Macintosh MA230. This is an original, genuine transformer I ordered from Macintosh back in those days. Uh, it runs a pair of 7591s, but I'm using the EL34s. I use 6L6s, 5881s. They all work really well. But I got something to show you. And it's funny how this could turn out. Okay. I'm uh, watching it over here on my little spectrum analyzer, as usual. I have, I'm having a, a constant fascination with this thing. Really, really, just, I don't know how I got along without it. I mean, down here I got 6 hertz. Over on this side I got 50 kilohertz. 60 kilohertz, actually, over on the right-hand side. So I can see everything. And we can, you know, uh, scope in on it more if we need to. Well, here's 60 hertz, but down here it's down a little bit below 90 dB. I made a video on that the other day, which, which was a real kludge, but I'm going to leave it posted because, you know, kludgy things happen. But anyway, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, things look pretty cool. 120 hertz right out here is down well over 110 dB. I said, that can't go wrong, can it? There's my one kilohertz right up close to zero dBm. I said, okay, and then I started tinkering, and let me, let me show you up here the numbers. See, that 10.37, that's its power. This is its THD, 0.06%, or 0.645, whatever, call it 0.07, you round it up, round it down. I said, how could life be any better? I said, okay, why don't we just run this thing up and take it at its full power? It makes sense, right? Okay, I'm going to run it up to 30 watts, but I think I'll put the, the camera right here as I run it up to 30 watts and watch what happens. And then I'll show you the 30 watts right back. We'll run it right up to 30 watts. Look at that. Look what happened. My 60 hertz went up to about, wow, less than minus 60, like minus 58, and my, uh, I mean, that's my 120 hertz, I'm sorry, 60 hertz just went up to about minus 85, but look what happened in my 120 hertz, that's my power supply noise, like, what the heck, you know, no. we got a problem, haven't we, okay, you look up here at our power, see, it's actually running at 32 watts right now, I'll turn it back down a wee bit. It'll do 32 watts quite nicely. But even if we put it at 30 watts, look at our THD. It's up to 10.5%. Like, what is the problem here, boys and girls? So what are we going to do? We're going to start troubleshooting this thing, right? Oh my goodness, we got bad tubes. Seems reasonable, doesn't it? Well, I know I'm being all dramatic here and everything. But the problem is, and I'll show you, is actually one of the sections of, I don't remember, let's see, underneath it, I, I don't remember, one of, one of them is a three section cam, one of them is a two section cam, one of the sections of the power supply capacitor is open. It's the one that comes, this has got a pie filter, so it comes out of the uh, power supply and um, goes through uh, a choke. There's a choke underneath it. There's a capacitor on both sides to ground, so it's a pie filter. And the one on the output of the pie filter is open. Just flat open. And that's what's causing that. I'll prove it to you here. Let me unplug this thing. Let's see if I can do this all in, in one one recording so I don't have to sew all these things together. Gotta make darn sure though that it's uh, the capacitors. Let's see, because your life depends on it. It's uh, unplugged. Oh, look at this. Damn, it even un... But, ouch! Well, that thing is hot. It even unsoldered the, the screen resistor. This thing's falling apart. 
because that open capacitor. I didn't expect that. Goes to show how things can go to hell, huh? Pretty quick. Oh, where's my blasted ESR meter? For crying out loud. Here it is. Um, let me show you here. Everything should be. I can smell it too. I guess it's about to catch that little thing down there on fire. Um, okay, ESR. Um, just to make sure, I'm going to go through and touch all these capacitors to ground. Just to make sure they're, they're all completely discharged. do that one hand one hand in the pocket okay here is some I'm trying to do this quickly okay battery died but that's okay let's start checking the capacitors there's one 1.3 ohms 1.1 ohms open nothing the other can with the two caps on it, 1.1, they're all like 40 microfarads or so, and 0.59. So they're all reasonable, but that one uh, right there is just open. So naturally, you know, in troubleshooting it, I just jumpered in, just paralleled some other capacitors in there. 47, I tried that, I tried 100. I even did a 470 and you know what it didn't make any difference they all do the same one does as good a job as the other that's what's wrong with this thing that's all that's wrong with it well I'm gonna have to uh, change it uh, change out that can capacitor it's the three section I have I have one right here actually I actually have one right here brand new one and uh, I'll have to put another resistor in there for the for the screen circuit. There's another one, brand new one, rated 525 volts, 40-40-40. Wow, that's that's the exact one. Well, I bought this some time ago. I still hope it's good. Anyway, and you'll see it's such a dramatic difference. But uh, that open capacitor, I mean, it worked great at 10 watts. Would have sounded fine. Actually, I've been using it for quite some time. Sounds great. I'm not running it at full power, of course. If I tried to run it at full power, it'd sound pretty awful. But um, it, you know, without without this little spectrum analyzer, uh, I, I don't know. I, it would have been a whole lot harder to diagnose. Of course, there's nothing happening there now. But with but with that thing and watching it, I saw what the problem was. It's a power supply problem. It's obvious. And uh, you know, no use in getting in there and testing all the tubes and and uh, just doing a whole lot of things that, that don't that don't matter. Well, let me get this thing fixed, and I'll show you how it performs. And uh, it's it's marvelous. But uh, what a coincidence! Back in a second. Okay, we're back. That only took a second, huh? And here's our capacitor. See, there's one section. 1.3 ohms. That's good. The other one, 1.1, and the one in the middle, it's open. <clears throat> That's one I just pulled out. I built this amplifier 39 years ago, and this is about uh, the third or fourth one of these I've had to put in there. I wonder why. But that is so odd. I would have uh, not, that would not have been my first guess about that distortion being, you know, quite good. At 10 watts and really horrible at uh, up at 30 watts when it's rated. Well, I'll show you what I did. It's this capacitor right there. It is unplugged, yeah. And then I had to re I replace that resistor too with a little bit larger one. It's 500 ohms. All the voltages are exactly right now. Let's plug it in and see how it works. We'll, we'll be watching it over here. Okay, and lastly, all warmed up, uh, here's what we have on the um, spectral display. Lights here. 
spectral display is uh, nice and clean. Our 60 hertz is down 92, 3 dB. Our 120 hertz is uh, almost 110 dB down. And, uh, well, let's see. What should we watch here? Let's just watch the watch these numbers up here and uh, the power is up at the top and the THD is the bottom number power THD will run it up to 10 watts and then we'll, we'll go back to the other uh, there's 10 watts with the THD this is the kilohertz 0.08 percent that's not bad run it all the way up to 30 watts there's 30 at 0.2 percent. Pretty good, huh? All because of that capacitor. And if we go back here to this display, let's see if we can get it all in there. Get it just right. So you see all over there. You go. You see our 100, our power supply, 120 hertz is still below 100 dB. Our 60 hertz is about 93 dB, it didn't, it didn't change. And you can tweak on the balance and run the second harmonic up and down and get the, uh, tweak the uh, THD right into it. Let's see what it's running at now. Well, actually it's right up here in the corner. 0.146. I think, I don't know if you can see that or not. I think you can. Let me move it down here the display and that, that actually agrees with the other one it's actually dropped so anyway that's a uh, that's the story of a bad capacitor and uh, sure made it uh, just go I've never seen that before just really go bonkers this is the resistor that melted out of it <laughs> that's the screen resistor so I, I don't know why it did that, but it did, and it was hot. So, uh, and, and here's our bad capacitor. And so, uh, hope this is of value to you guys. And uh, once again, my little FFT spectrum uh, device, spectrum analyzer, whatever we want to call it, came to the rescue and uh, and, and made it made it very easy. Thanks for watching. I knew there was something else I wanted to show you. I've got four Acrosound TO305 transformers. I'm going to be building a pair of amplifiers with a pair of stereo ones. The difference between the TO300, it's a really popular um, 6L6 style uh, output transformer and the TO300 and the TO305 which is what this is is this one just happens to have two extra 500 ohm windings which we won't be using this is the output ground 4, 8, and 16 this is the center tap and this is the plate and the screen because it's ultra linear so I'm anxious to get started on that just waiting on some parts and uh, we'll see how they turn out I had some of these things a long time ago and I got rid of them and I always wished I didn't. But uh, there sits four of them. So let's see how they perform. That'll be uh, one of my next projects. Hopefully I'll get it uh, going in the next couple of weeks or so.